right, 2.5 part two. So in part one, we talked about the fundamental theorem of algebra. So if we had x to the fifth power, we knew that we would have at most five zeros. We would have exactly five zeros, including the imaginary or complex zeros. In part two, we're going to kind of be working backwards. It's going to give us the zeros, and we're going to be coming up with the polynomial function. So one thing that's super, super important is complex zeros happen in conjugate pairs. So if 2i is a zero, negative 2i would also be a zero. So complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs. So complex zeros are imaginary or square roots. So it says if a plus bi is a zero, then a minus bi is also a zero. So it's conjugate pair. So in example four, we're just going to jump right into our examples. It gives us the zeros, and we have to work backwards from the zeros. So typically, when we solve something, we'd have a polynomial, we'd factor it, and then we'd come up with the zeros. Here we have the zeros. We're going to put it in factored form and then come up with the polynomial. So first thing we want to do is make sure we have all of our zeros included. If 3i is a zero, we need its conjugate pair that's a zero also. What's the conjugate pair of 3i? Negative 3i. So if positive 3i is a zero, then negative 3i is also a zero. So here we have four zeros. So negative one, negative one, 3i, and negative 3i. Now when we put it into factored form, it's always x minus the number. But how would we write x minus negative 1? x plus 1. So x plus 1. We have another negative 1, so another x plus 1. And x minus 3i. And x minus negative 3i, which would be x plus 3i. So we want to write it out in factored form first. From here, we're going to foil everything together. We're just going to multiply it all together. So we always want to start with the conjugate pair. Start with the conjugates. What's the shortcut that we have when we multiply conjugates together? Awesome. A squared minus B squared. So our A is going to be our X and B is 3i. So we have x squared minus, it's always minus in the middle, 3i squared. So x squared minus, don't forget you have to square the 3 and you have to square the i. So 3 squared would be 9i squared. What does i squared change to? Negative 1. So that becomes plus 9. So this would be x squared plus 9. If you FOIL it out, you'll end up with the same answer. So you can always FOIL it. But here, since we're dealing with conjugates, I like to do the conjugate shortcut. So next, we have these two things that we're going to multiply. You can FOIL these together, or you can multiply x plus 1 to x squared plus 9, and then the other x plus 1. The order that you multiply doesn't matter. It's like if you have 4 times 2 times 2. You can multiply these two together first and then multiply your answer to 2. Or you can multiply 2 times 2 together first and then multiply it to 4. So the order that you multiply them doesn't matter. Just don't, I don't know, just make sure you're consistent. Stay organized in your work. I'm going to FOIL these two together first. So when we FOIL them, we get x squared plus x plus x plus 1. So when I simplify this, this would be x squared plus 2x plus 1. You want to simplify it so you're not making more work for yourself. So simplify it as much as you can. 
Next step, I'm gonna foil these two together now. So it's a little bit more than just foiling because the first one has three terms. So just make sure everything in the first set gets multiplied to everything in the second set. So starting with x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth power. x squared times nine be nine x squared. 2x times x squared would be 2x to the third power. 2x times 9 would be 18x. And then 1 times x squared would be x squared. You just throw it away. And 1 times 9 is 9. Last step, we want to combine our like terms. So x to the fourth power. Then I have 2x cubed. Then 9x squared plus x squared would be 10x squared plus 18x plus 9. And then the very, very last step is we want to make sure we name it as a polynomial function. So I am going to say f of x equals the function that we just found. So you always want to make sure you name it. So you could say f of x, you can call it whatever, g of x, h of x, whatever you want. Just don't forget to name it. How many zeros did we start with? Four. One, two, three, four. And what was our highest degree that we found? x to the fourth power. It'll always match up. If you start with x to the or if you start with four zeros, you're going to end up with x to the fourth power. Just like before when we were solving it and we were doing the opposite way, we had x to the fourth power, we would end up finding four zeros. All right, let's go to the next page. Let's do, let's do one. So it's always x minus the number. So x minus negative five would be what? x plus 5. How would I say x minus 0? We'll just put the x outside. So I'll put that x out front. And then x minus 2. I'm going to foil these two together first and then just distribute the x at the end. So x times x would be x squared minus 2x plus 5x minus 10. Simplify, we want to combine our like terms. So x squared plus 3x minus 10. And then the last step, we got to distribute that x. So it'd be x to the third power plus 3x squared minus 10x. How many zeros did we start with? Three. And I ended with x to the third power. So it's just one way that you can check your math to make sure you did it right. And then with the very last step, we have to name it. So let's call it f of x. So that would be our function. All right, let's do two. Are we missing any zeros? Remember, complex numbers happen in conjugate pairs. Do we have any complex numbers here? Square root 3 is a complex number. So what would the conjugate of square root 3 be? negative square root three. So we've got three zeros here. So I'm gonna end up with x to the third power. So let's write it out in factored form. What would this be in factored form? x plus five, x minus square root three, and x plus square root three. Now we always want to work with the conjugate pair first. So I'm gonna foil these two together out first. You can either foil or use your conjugate shortcut. I'm gonna do the shortcut. So a squared minus b squared. So we have x squared minus square root three squared. So x squared minus, what's square root three squared? Three, awesome. The square root and the squared cancel. So this would just be x squared minus three. Then we're multiplying that to x plus 5. So now we're just going to foil these two together. Everybody with me so far? Any questions? 
All right, so let's foil. Jacob, question? Okay. Yeah, you only use one. So, like, it's always going to be one of them has a plus in the middle and one has a minus. That's what makes them conjugates. So, you're just looking at the numbers, not the sign. So, the A is going to be the first, B is going to be the second. The sign in the middle doesn't matter. All right, so now when we foil these two together, we get x to the third power minus 3x plus 5x squared minus 15. Combine like terms if you have them. Here we don't have any, but I do need to put it in standard form and name it. So f of x equals x to the third power plus 5x squared minus 3x minus 15. Let's take a look at number three. For three, am I missing any zeros? What are we missing? Awesome. So I have positive 2i. I need negative 2i. Just for the sake of time, if we have time, I'll come back to this one. I'll write it out in factored form first, and then I'll let you guys multiply it on your own. So what would our factors be? What would our factors be here? x plus 1, x minus 2i, and x plus 2i. And you'd want to foil out the conjugates first or use your conjugate shortcut. Let's look at 4. What zeros are we missing here? Negative 3i. Anything else? Awesome. 2 minus i. Let's write this out in factored form. So I'm going to put my complex zeros together, the pairs together, just because it's going to be easier for us to foil out. So I've got x minus 3i. Its pair is x plus 3i. Now be careful here. Remember, it's always x minus the zero that you found. So it'll be x minus 2 plus i. I'm going to put that in parentheses because it's more than one term. And x minus... 2 minus i. So we put that in parentheses because we've got two terms there. And then x minus negative 4 would be x plus 4. Now I'm going to simplify these a little bit. So we've got x minus 2. I'm just distributing the negative. So x minus 2 minus i and x minus 2 plus i. Remember, you always want to foil out the pairs first or use your conjugate shortcut with your conjugate pairs. So we'd foil the x minus 3i and x plus 3i together and the x minus 2 minus i and x minus 2 plus i. So foil these pairs together first, get your answers, and then you'd foil the rest of them together. Again, I'll come back. We'll finish this one, but I want to move on to the next page. So in example seven, it says find all the zeros. How many zeros are we going to have total here? Four. We'll have four zeros. And it gives us one of them. Do we know what another zero is? Awesome. The conjugate pair. So one minus three i. So here... In factored form, we have x minus, and I'm going to write it in parentheses because it's more than one term, 1 plus 3i, and x minus, I'm going to write it in parentheses because it's more than one term, 1 minus 3i. Now let's think about it for a second. If I had, let's say, 104 as a number. We're thinking about it number-wise. And 2 is a factor. How would I find the other factor? What would I do to find the other factor? We divide 104 by 2. So here it gives me a polynomial. It gives me the whole thing. It gives me 104 as my polynomial. And it says 2 is a factor. Find the rest of them. So we have to divide to find the rest of them. But before I do that, I need to multiply this out. 
we got to see what this equals, the simplified version of this. And then we're going to divide to find the rest of our factors. So we have two of them. But let's find what this is in factored form. Let's make it nicer. Because we don't want to divide with all of this going on. So I'm going to simplify. We've got x minus 1 minus 3i and x minus 1 plus 3i. Are these conjugates? What do we think? Yes. Yeah. One of them has a minus in the middle. The other one has a plus. So we have to be careful here when we're using our conjugate shortcut. Remember, a squared minus b squared. What is our a? What comes before the sign? x minus 1 is going to be our a. What's our b? Just 3i. It's just what comes after that sign change. So just 3i is going to be our b. So here I have x minus 1 squared minus, it's always minus in the middle, 3i squared. And I'm going to write that in parentheses. So we've got a little bit more work to do here to do our conjugate shortcut. x minus 1 squared, we have to FOIL it out. So we get, if you need to write it twice and FOIL it out, x minus 1 times x minus 1 would be x squared minus x minus x plus 1. Let's simplify it a little bit more. So x squared minus 2x plus 1. Next, we have 3i squared. we got to square the 3 and square the i. So this would be minus 9i squared. What does i squared turn into? Negative 1. So that makes it a plus 9. Everybody with me so far? Any questions here? Let's simplify this a little bit more. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 10. So this is one of our factors. It solves out our zeros from our factor would be 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i. But this is a factor of x to the fourth power minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60. What did we say we have to do to find the other factors? When I had 104 and 2 was a factor, how do I find the rest of them? Divide. So after we FOIL it out, so I'll say step one is to FOIL. Step two is divide. Unfortunately for us here, we can't use synthetic division because we have x squared minus 2x plus 10 that goes outside of the box. And inside the box... We've got x to the fourth power minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 60. All right, so let's divide. Let's think about what we did back in chapter one. We'll divide. So x to the fourth power divided by x squared. We have four x's and take two of them away. How many are we left with? 2 x squared. I'm going to write that on top of my x squared term. Keep my terms in line. After we divide, what's step 2? Multiply. I'm going to multiply x squared by everything out front. So we get x to the fourth power minus 2x cubed plus 10x squared. What's step 3? Change the signs and combine. So minus plus minus. Change the signs and combine them together. X to the fourth powers cancel. Minus x cubed minus 4x squared. Let's do it again. So we're going to divide. What's negative x cubed divided by x squared? Negative x, perfect. Then we multiply with everything out front. So we get negative x cubed 
negative x times negative 2x would be positive 2x squared. And 10 times negative x would be negative 10x. What do we do next? Change the signs and combine. So change the sign, change the sign, change the sign, and combine. X cubes cancel. Negative 4x squared minus 2x squared would be negative 6x squared. I'm going to combine my terms here. So 2x plus 10x would be 12x. What do we do next? What would we do next? Negative 6x squared divided by x squared would be Negative 6x squared divided by x squared is negative 6. We multiply negative 6 with everything out front, so we get negative 6x squared plus 12x minus 60. What's next? Change the signs and combine. So 6x squared cancels. 12x minus 12x cancels, and negative 6c plus 6c cancels. So what's our remainder? Our remainder is 0. We have none. This will always divide evenly. So there will never be a remainder if you do it right. If you end up with the remainder, you did something wrong. You may be foiled wrong in step one, or you divided wrong in step two. There will never be a remainder. Because we knew that x squared minus 2x plus 10 was a factor, so it's going to divide in evenly, meaning that there will be no remainder. So now we're left with x squared minus x minus 6. Step 3 will be to factor slash solve because we're still finding for the rest we're still looking for the rest of our zeros so what we need to find is the rest of our zeros do we have two factors of negative six that add to negative one what negative three and two so x minus three and x plus 2. So x equals what? 3 and negative 2. So I have x equals 3, negative 2, and the two zeros that I started with, 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i. These are my four zeros. How many zeros did I, knew, did I know from the start that I was going to have? Four. I found them all. These questions are a lot of work. It's a lot of everything we've been doing so far. You've got to foil your complex conjugates together. You've got to divide, and then you've got to factor and solve. Let's do number two. So we're going to use the given zero to find all the zeros of the function. In number two, how many zeros are we going to have? We're going to have three zeros. So we're looking for three answers. It gives us one. Oh, that's so nice of them to give us one. Do we know what another one is? Um, two plus awesome. Negative 2 plus 5i. So just the sign in the middle changes. The negative 2 stays the same. A lot of people made that mistake on the last test. When we multiplied the top and the bottom by the conjugate, they made it positive 2. Just the sign in the middle changes. So now let's write this out in factored form. So we have x minus, and I'm going to put this in parentheses. So negative 2 minus 5i. And x minus, again in parentheses, negative 2 plus 5i. I would always write it in parentheses. Don't skip steps because that's how we make mistakes. 
From here, what would we do next? Let's distribute the negative. Let's simplify these a little bit. So this becomes x plus 2 plus 5i and x plus 2 minus 5i. Now we have conjugates. We can use our conjugate shortcut. One of them has a plus, the other one has a minus. So these are conjugates of each other. So I'm going to use my a squared minus b squared. What's my a? Awesome. x plus 2 is my a. It's the same in both of them. So x plus 2 is a. So we've got x plus 2 squared. It's always minus in the middle. What's b? 5i. 5i is b. So 5i squared. So let's FOIL out the x plus 2 squared first. So this is x plus 2 times x plus 2. We have x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. So x squared plus 4x plus 4. 5i squared, we're going to distribute the squared to the 5 and the i. So this is minus, what's 5 squared? 25, and i squared is i squared. What does i squared change to? Negative 1. So that makes that minus 25 turn into plus 25. So plus 25. We can combine our like terms here. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 29. How do we find the remaining factor? What do we need to do? Long division. We got to divide. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 29. And then inside the box, we've got x cubed plus 11x squared plus 57x plus 203. So let's divide. x cubed divided by x squared would be If I have three x's and I take two of them away, how many am I left with? One. One. So just x. I'm going to put that on top of my x term. What would we do next? Multiply. We're going to multiply it by everything out front. So we get x cubed. x times 4x would be 4x squared. x times 29 would be 29x. What do we do next? Change the signs and combine. So x cubes cancel. 11x squared minus 4x squared would be 7x squared. 57x minus 29x is 28x. Awesome. What do we do next? Divide again. What's 7x squared divided by x squared? 7, so plus 7. Then we multiply by everything out front, so we get 7x squared plus 4 time, 4x times 7 would be 28x. What's 29 times 7? 203. What do we do next? Change the signs and combine. 7x squared cancel. 28x is cancel. And 203 is cancel. What's our remainder? Zero. That tells us that we did it right. Again, you'll never get a remainder if you do this correctly. If you end up with a remainder, you did something wrong. So we have x plus 7. What would our remaining zero be? x equals negative 7. Awesome. We just set it equal to zero and solve. So x equals negative 7, and then I'm going to put my other two zeros on my list too. So negative 2 minus 5i and negative 2 plus 5i. Those are my other two zeros. So I have three zeros. How many did I say I was going to have? Three. So we found them all.